Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. I'm glad that you're here. Today we're outside, we're in the field, field, my front yard that is, to use the Nano VNA to check the SWR of an antenna. I have uh, some Hustler, uh, Hustler resonators here that we're going to use in a mobile capacity to check the, uh, check the reading, to check the SWR, the resonance of these. And the Nano VNA is going to work perfectly for this particular application. I've had these resonators for a while and I kind of know where some of them are at, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So we're going we're gonna to do some dialing in. In order to do this, what we're going to need is the Nano VNA and then we're going to need an adapter. The adapter is going to allow us to, uh, you know, well, convert from the SMA male, which, or SMA female, excuse me, which is on the side of the Nano VNA, and we're going to go to something like the uh, PL259 or SO239 to connect back to a, a, a feed line, right? Now, of course, whatever adapter you need might be different based off of the particular feed line that you're using, what connection it has on the end of it, maybe it's an N style connector, whatever you might need, just make sure that you get the correct adapter. Um, so once you have the adapter, all you're gonna do is plug it into port one. Now you should have already calibrated this and I actually did already calibrate the, this particular unit just in the past hour or so. And if you're not sure how to do that, I did produce another video on, on that exact topic. So I'm just hand tightening it now and that's all set. So we're ready to go. All we have to do now is just plug in the antenna and then dial in the particular frequency range on the Nano VNA. So let's do that. Okay, so I, I've got my feed line here and I'm just going to put it in. Tighten it down, and we should be good to go. And there's our, uh, there's our dip. So let's take a look at this and let's talk about what we're seeing here. All right, so I've just plugged in the feed line from the antenna, and this kind of really wonky graph is what I'm getting. Now, I know that this is an SWR graph because it actually says it up in the top here, um, and on the right hand side, the scale is at the high end of five and at the low end of one. If I use the knob on the side of the uh, Nano VNA, I'm able to move through the different frequencies. So I can see that at 25.8 megahertz, uh, I have a 2.85 uh, to one SWR. Now, uh, I can see the scale, or the, not scale, but the, the range, the span, if you will, uh, starts at three megahertz and ends at 60 megahertz. So this is a really wide scale, uh, which is fine sometimes, but it really depends on what it is you're looking to accomplish. Um, and keeping in mind that the Nano VNA will only do 100 points uh, in whatever scale you set. So right now it looks like at 40 meters, so around seven megahertz, it looks like, okay, there's a dip here, right? It looks like at, right at 6.99 megahertz, there's a 3.3 or so uh, dip, uh, but this is only taking probably one or two points here. And it's not a particularly good indication of what that SWR actually is because the span is so wide that we're not getting a good detailed reading at that particular range. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna change our, our scale here. So uh, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to stimulus, I'm going to do start, and I'm gonna do say six megahertz. And then I'm going to do a stop at we'll say eight megahertz. And there I'm starting to see a much more accurate representation. And that's because it's taking 100 points of measurement between six megahertz and eight megahertz. So if I wanted to see just between seven and 7.3, what I could do is I could put that in. So if I put in seven, whoop, not 77, just seven, and I could do 
0.0 if I wanted to. I don't have to do the 0.0. 7.0 megahertz, and I'm going to do a stop of, we'll do uh, 7, well, not 5, 7.3 megahertz. And look at that graph. All right, that's what I was looking for here. So now I can see at 7 megahertz, my SWR is 3.22-ish or so. And if I scroll down, I can see that it has, it bottoms out. I can see that it bottoms out uh, right here at around 7.135 megahertz and at a 1.38 SWR. So I, I'm very happy with that. Now, maybe if I wanted to, I might want to look at something like 7.2 megahertz and say, okay, well, where's that at around 7.2? Um, you know, depending on if you're doing CW or if you're going to be doing, you know, single sideband, just depends on what you're looking for and, you know, what your, uh, what your license privileges are. Uh, you might want to make some adjustments. All right, so I've plugged in my 20 meter antenna and I'm not really sure where it's resonant exactly because I've never used this one before, um, but we can find out pretty easily. So right now you can see that my span is still set to from seven megahertz to 7.3. So it's not gonna really show me anything for, for 20 meters at 14 megahertz. So uh, we're going to change this. So I'm gonna click on the screen. I'm gonna go to my start. I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna say, uh, 12, we'll start with 12 megahertz, and then I'm going to do a stop, and I'm going to do a stop of uh, 15 megahertz, and there we go, we've got a dip, and that's what we were looking for, um, and I can, I can scroll down to see where that dip is exactly, and I can see that the, uh, the final dip is right there at around 13.7 or so megahertz. So this seems like it might be a, a little bit low uh, for what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to do some adjusting to this antenna, but the graph comes out pretty nicely. Now, you notice that I had to manually put that in. There is a way that you can save these and recall them. And so just so you know, uh, I'm just gonna go here to uh, the recall option and I'm going to recall, and actually I don't remember, where, I don't recall which one it was, I think it's three. Yes, it is. Uh, so there's 14 megahertz to 14.350, and we can see where my, my graph is at right now on that, and so it looks like this linear slope up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, now I know what I need to do as far as making an adjustment, and I need to, you know, I need to make it so that that dip is a little bit further to the right, so that means that because the, the dip is to the left, right, the, the, dip is, the dip is to the left, the dip is at a too low, that means that my antenna is too long, so I need to shorten my antenna to drive the, uh, the dip up to a higher frequency. All right, so we were able to successfully check the SWR reading of two of the different Hustler uh, resonators and see exactly where the dips are. So, mission accomplished, right? Like that was what we were looking for. A few things that are worth noting though, the adapter that you use here between the Nano VNA and your feed line, it matters. Um, it matters in the sense of some of them have more play, a little bit more wiggle room to them. And the consequence of that is that you can get some really wild graphs that are going across the screen here. Um, and it might mean that you end up having to like hold it in a particular position. Now that can also be a result of how you have your connection, uh, you know, on the feed line itself. So, you know, if you start to experience that, you know, you may have some frustration point there, but just so you know, um, good stuff can happen, but at the same time, well, it can be a little bit finicky as well. Um, so give it a try, see how it works for you. I know that for, for me, it's the only uh, SWR meter reader that I have, antenna analyzer that I have, and I, I am perfectly fine with it. So um, there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, leave them in the comments down below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you found this to be helpful, and I'll see you next time. Until then.